የጭንቀታችሁ የበሽታችሁ የነገር በሽታ ይኖራል የሰጋዊ በሽታ ይኖራል ልክ ልክ በሽታ ይኖራልና የናንተን ማሳብ የናንተን በሽታ ቅዱስ ገብርኤል ይስማችሁና ያሰግድላችሁ ይላልና ወንዶች በጨብጨባ ሴቶች በልጅታ እግዚአብሔር ለመስገን እና ለክብሩ መገለጫ የሚሆን ስለቴን ለሆስፒታል ብዙ አድርግ ነበር ነገር ግን ቅዱስ ገብርኤል እግዚአብሔር በትንሹም መሰገናልና ካደረገልኝ መልካም ነገር ካደረገልኝ መልካም ነገር ጥቂት ነገር ይጀመርቻል እሷም 500 ዶላር ለቅዱስ ገብርኤል ይጀመርቻለሁ ከብርና መስጋና ለሰው ማጠራሪ ሁሉ ይላል ከዚህ በመከተል ዲያቆን አቤል የእንግሊዘኛ ትምርቱን ይሰፈና May the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be glorified unceasingly forever. Amen. Good morning clergy, mothers, fathers and children of God. May God remember us in his kingdom. Today's lesson will be from 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 4 through 12. In this reading, Peter, the disciple of God, tells us that above all, we are to have fervent love for one another. To understand the depth of this love, that Peter tells us to bear in our hearts, we first have to look at the one who is love. Because only through him will we be able to have the love Peter is speaking about. Today we're going to talk about two lessons. In the first lesson, we're going to talk about the prerequisite for this kind of love. And what we have to do to ourselves so that we can make room for this love. And in the second lesson, We're going to talk about how this love covers a multitude of sins. So the first prerequisite to attain this love is the destruction of self-love. The identity that we create for ourselves is the number one reason why we lack in love. As we start off young and we grow up, we all create in ourselves an identity. We all start to ask a question, a very important question. We all start to ask this question, who am I? How do I look in regards to uh, uh, other people? How do other people see me? How is my social standing? Am I the top or the or the best? Life is kind of like uh, this arcade game. I kind of I was thinking about it and uh, it made sense. Have you guys ever heard of the game called Pac-Man? The little yellow uh, circle thing that, op that opens his mouth and it eats all the little points. And then there's like different colored ghosts that chase you. And then you eat like a power-up or whatever and then you can eat the ghosts. If we really think about life, that's what it is. Life is, in our time here, a way that we survive. And some of us take it more than surviving, but a way that we prosper. What can I get from life? So especially in the Western, in the Western world, our lives has turned into a game of Pac-Man, where we chase and we consume and we eat, we sleep, we chase money, and then we forget a higher calling. We forget our true identity. This, as we grow up, becomes sort of like an idol. If you guys, you guys remember the statue for uh, Nebuchadnezzar? How he uh, made a statue, and the head was like gold, and then bronze, silver, and then bronze, and it goes down from the quality of the stone or, or the materials. Nebuchadnezzar was so worried about how he looked in his kingdom, that he himself lost his kingdom. He, didn't, he wasn't the master of his kingdom because 
his image was reliant on the approval of others. As human beings, we all we either have to serve, or we have to serve one thing. It is in our nature. That's why throughout history, we always, even though it might not be the uh, the faith of the true God that we worship now, there's always some type of deity that we worship. This faith is in our hearts. It is implanted by God. And it depends on how we live our lives, but as we live, we all create in ourselves an identity. Who am I? Now there, there's a problem with that, and that problem is there's only so much room in our hearts. If it's crowded with a statue of ourselves, where would God abide? God tells us that we are His kingdom. We are His temple, our body is His temple. Our body is what was paid for by His blood on the cross. We do not belong to ourselves. And if we sit our identity in a, in, in a throne that is in our hearts, where is God? Where will God sit? Where will God move? Love is given and selfless by nature, and it was revealed in God. Therefore, if we do not give it, then how can we be once created in the image of God, especially if our love is inward for ourselves? I want you guys to think about what does created in the image of God mean? What is the image? Specifically, the image of God. When you guys look in the mirror, what do you see? You see yourselves, right? If we are an image of God, does a mirror have an identity? Does, would a mirror speak up and say, I am Tom or I am John? What does a mirror do? It reflects whatever is standing in front of it. Who are we reflecting? Are we reflecting our passions? Are we reflecting an identity that was created by us? If we are to reflect the image of God, and if God is love, then we reflect His love. We reflect His love first back to Him, and then to all of creation. Let me tell you guys some stuff about love. Love comes solely from God. Love doesn't come from us. This love is true. Undiluted love. Love with no ulterior motives and hidden interests. Love that enters the lowest valley and the dirtiest places. Love that fills all things. Love that is deep and endures all things. Love that is patient. Love that is kind. Love that causes humility. Love that purifies and leaves peace in the place of abandonment. Love that leaves joy in the place of depression. Love that leaves unity in the place of loneliness. Love that suffers long. His love that makes Him everything to us. His love that makes Him a father to those who don't have fathers. His, fa His love that makes Him a mother to those who don't have mothers. His love that makes Him a friend to those who are alone. His love that makes Him a provider for a single mother. His love that makes Him a sibling that gets, that, that helps a college student through go, go through school. His love that makes Him a teacher that teaches the ways of the Holy Spirit to our fathers in the monasteries. This love is defined and manifested in the actions of the Son of God. It is expressed in His descent into the world from His throne in heaven. And more personally, into our hell, into our lives, that is fragmented and broken. It is, it is expressed in His participation in our experience. He was born in a manger. He wasn't born in a hospital like we were. He is the least of us. He, has, he, he experienced our hunger. He experienced our thirst. He was with us in our weakness, in our sadness, and in our, and in our happiness. 
His love that is expressed in the holes in his hands and in his side. His love that is expressed in the, that, in the spit that was on his face. His love that was expressed in the blood that fell from the crown of thorns on his head. His love that was expressed in the tears of his mother. A mother that watched her son suffer. It's expressed in the tragic lives of the saints. God and earth became one. This is the first fruit of love. Love is the mother of humility. Love causes us to think of others before ourselves. There was this story about a king and a monk. This king used to um, bash the Christian faith and say, how can God be man? How can God lower himself and become man? How can he embarrass himself? So the monk took his firstborn son and he threw him into a lake. What do you guys think the king did? He took off his cloak, he took off his crown, and he jumped in the lake and he grabbed his son and came out. And then the monk asked him the question, well, you're a king. You rule a whole kingdom. You are the most respected man in the whole nation. How could you take off your crown and take off your cape and jump into a, a lake and get wet and dirty in front of all your subjects? What's the answer? Why did he do it? I can't hear you. To save his son, right? Why would he want to save his son? Because he loves him. I talk, uh, I told you guys, I told you guys about some stuff about love, but I wanted to make one thing clear. Love is not an emotion. You guys, uh, we see in movies and we see in, we read in books, and especially the Western, the Western, um, in the West, is portrayed as an emotion that we have. Love is an, an emotion. If it was an emotion, then I could hate them. I could hate someone right after I love them. Right? Divine love is a state of being. Love is not an emotion as the world would have us believe. Love is an identity. It is the identity that was given to us by God in our creation. It is who, who is love that we reflect in our being as His image. We know who we are in Him by our participation and love with Him. When we suffer for others, like how He suffered for us. We love as He does when we are outcasted, regarded as fools, when we are rejected, when we are persecuted because of our love towards Him. We, found, we find our identity in Him. We abide in Him not only in the name as a Christian, but only when we follow the way, the way of love. When we love the one who is the least among us, as he loved the one sheep that was lost. When he lines the, 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 the saints at the right side and the sinners at the left side, what does he ask them? Did you feed me when I'm hungry? Did you visit me when I'm sick? Did you clothe me when, I'm, when I was naked? This is the love that covers a multitude of sins. When we start to have the love of God in us, the sin of others becomes very insignificant. St. Isaac the Syrian says, the love of God or the mind of God is like a river. And the sin of humanity is like someone throwing a fistful of sand in the river. Will that sand stop the flow of the river? That is the greatness of his compassion. When we start to have the love of God in us, our hearts become larger. And when there is no self-love, the only things that matter 
are, are our Lord and our brothers and sisters. Therefore there will be no condemnation but only mercy, no iniquity but only what is profitable in the kingdom, freedom of what concerns us in the worries of our survival because our faith is in Him who is victorious over the world. Now you might be asking, I mean, how do I get this love, right? What did, what did I tell you guys the prerequisite was? You guys remember? It's to destroy the identity that we have made for ourselves. Well, how do we do that? We do that through prayer, through fasting, through obedience and repentance. And finally, we ask God to give us His love, not only for each other, but also for all of creation. What's the last thing I mean? Donuts, donuts, do you have a Yan Sawal, the Villa to Vienna?